Who's the lucky student? Who's the lucky student? Oh, no. Daniel, go to the board and find my vertex, please. Thank you. Backwards and find the, the school spirit here at Veterans Memorial Early College High School has been phenomenal. They're very united. They support each other and I see that uh, with one comes all and everybody has each other's back. You know, not only uh, is it academically but athletically and we're here to support each other and I see that across the board. You know, as a first year principal here at Veterans, I see a lot of that. They are united, not only as students, but as the parents as well. The community, how they come behind us. And you see that at games, and you see how, how it's almost like family. Football was first played in BISD in 1909, and so in that season, we're, uh, I think Brownsville ISD Eagles, the Brownsville Eagles was 0-2, and, and so football was born, uh, you know, over over 100 years ago. Let's fast forward it to the Brownsville Eagles. That was the very first team in the history of Brownsville ISD that actually qualified to the state semifinals. Uh, they, it was in the second round. We've had mul multiple teams get to the, uh, to the third round. Uh, about, uh, Hannah Eagles have done it about four times. Uh, Brownsville veterans actually qualified for the for the third round last year. Of course, the foundation I thought, in my opinion, was probably was set from uh, Coach Kelly Lee, who we hired at Veterans two years ago. He brought in an incredible, a different type of system that the Valley and the state is is not used to seeing. I think our team was made up of uh, hard workers, guys who uh, weren't the biggest, weren't the fastest, weren't the strongest but uh, it was all about heart. They were resilient and they wanted it all. Um, I think our relationship is great just playing all throughout since freshman year. Some of them even throughout middle school just coming up and just how we usually hang out on and off the field just really builds that chemistry in our relationship. We've always like had a bond together and then coming into high school just um, meeting new people and you know, building a relationship all the way up until now. Just we were just a good bond between everybody. Uh, the relationship is like a brotherhood. We're like a whole family, not just the players, but the whole coaching staff too. I think not a lot of teams have that. Through the locker room, even off the field, we've been pretty close, um, just staying with each other, having each other's back. We all do each other's assignments and doing our own thing. We're just a team, uh, a team that plays uh, for each other. We don't, we don't have any individuals on our team and, and we, all, we don't have any selfish players. We all just play for each other. I did not know Coach Ramirez before I got to Veterans. Uh, I had heard of him, but I had never had the privilege of working with him. I see a, a gentleman who's got a great heart, and he's a man of God, and he, you know, he really puts himself into the game. Uh, his leadership style is wonderful. Uh, the way he talks to the kids, the way he talks to the coaches, the way he talks to the community. And as the athletic coordinator, he's done an excellent job in leading our athletic program here at Veterans Memorial. I thought going through high school and uh, starting college, I thought I wanted to be a doctor, honestly. Um, and when I was, you know, I was in, in college taking classes, uh, I had a younger brother who was uh, at Lopez High School. And so I knew he was going to be at football games and I approached the coach there at the time and see if I could just come out and kind of integrate myself with the football program. And uh, Coach Valentin Montemayor was the head coach there at Lopez and, and he gave me an opportunity to come out and just be around, be around, right? Volunteer, help picking up stuff and, and just being around the game from a coaching perspective now. And so uh, lo and behold, I graduate and I, I land a, a coaching job at Lopez High School. I, I work with some uh, at that time, coaches that had already had long careers and uh, their career was winding down. So there was a lot of experienced coaches at Lopez when I started there. And from my very early start in coaching, I was ex able to experience success, you know, being around good teams that made the playoffs and made, made good, good, uh, good runs in the playoffs as well. So 
Um, and then uh, in 2010, veterans becomes a, a reality. And so I get an opportunity to come over here and uh, from the very get-go, this was a program that you knew was, was gonna do some good things. I come to Veterans, I'm part of the inaugural staff and it's a special situation and I just fall in love with the school, um, you know, with the kids that come here, the families that come here and I spend a lot of time here. I spend uh, the next six years here and I know that through those six years I was able to build a lot of great relationships with the other teachers that are here but also with the staff that was here. Uh, in 2017, uh, Coach Guess is uh, it gets the opportunity to lead the Hannah football team and uh, he, he, he promotes me or gives me an opportunity to become a defensive coordinator for the first time and so I joined him at Hannah. Uh, we had a great year 2017. Um, God's been putting me in situations where in Brownsville working with Brownsville kids alongside Brownsville coaches were able to achieve success and it was I think it was just preparation for what was to come. Uh, in 2022, Coach Kelly Lee needs a defensive coordinator. At that time, my son is a sophomore here at Veterans. And uh, I just saw the opportunity for me to come to Veterans and kind of spend some time on the same campus as where my son's going to school. That's too good of an opportunity to pass up. And so I'm um, given the opportunity to come to Veterans as a defensive coordinator in 2022. Coach Kelly Lee already had a great thing going. My sophomore year, our defense quarter left. And then our junior year, we got Coach Ram. And I just could tell right away he was just a smart defensive coach. And I was, I was just impressed by him. 2022 was a great season. We have some record-breaking kids on our, on our team. Riz Sampaio ends up winning district MVP. And then, you know, the legend of Brian Chavez happens. Nine touchdowns in one game in the second round of the playoffs. Unheard of, right? Uh, and he's a monster of a man. But... Through it all, uh, we know we're losing specifically those two guys to graduation and a handful of other good seniors. Uh, even through that, we saw, man, 2023, we have a lot of guys coming back. And if we can find a replacement for, for Reese, um, you know, we might have something pretty special. Then December rolls around. Coach Kelly Lee has an opportunity to take a college job, and he does. So I know at first when uh, Kelly Lee left us, uh, we didn't really have a head coach. It was just two guys trying to be in charge. So, I mean, we were a little bit of all over the place. You know, we do this and we do that. So there wasn't a set foundation in place or a set standard in place. Uh, and so now there's this, this vacancy there. Um, and I knew in my heart that I had been pursuing uh, the opportunity to become a head coach already. I had interviewed at several, several places and uh, all, all of them looked promising, but it, it wasn't my time yet uh, at any of those. Well, the administration is recommending for athletic coordinator at Veterans Memorial Early College High School, uh, Coach Jose C. Ramirez for athletic coordinator at Veterans Early College High School. Please vote. Motion passes, 7-0 unanimous. I, I was just thinking, I don't know why they did that. Like, So, so, um, I kind of know the whole story after the fact, and I, I don't know that there that there was opposition. There was some uh, unclarified questions, mm -hmm. and so for me, it was just uh, another another opportunity to practice patience and uh, practice uh, discipline, and also, you know, really rely on my faith that I was doing what I needed to do to to be my, put myself in a position to become a head coach. I don't think it was a negative thing at all. It was uh, people had to do their due diligence and I respect that because uh, in every position that I've been, uh, where I have to make decisions, you know, I, I, I value when I'm given the opportunity to make those decisions. I had to vouch to the principal to give him the job. Like just, she asked me, who would you want to lead you in the next, in the future? And I was just like, I want Coach Ram. You know, everybody wasn't with him at first, but I, I trusted him. I knew that um, the right person for this job was going to be selected. And I, I love being a Charger, I love this community, I love this school, and I, and I genuinely told myself, if that is my belief, and, and 
I'm not the guy that gets named, then I'm okay with that as well because I know this school is a special place and, and the, the, the right person will be placed there. And I, it's, it's cool to know that that right person is, is the guy I see in the mirror every day. The, well, the, the administration Pierce. makes a recommendation for the athletic coordinator, Jose C. Ramirez at Veterans Early College High School. Please vote. Motion passes, 7-0 unanimous. I felt nothing but genuine support from every major stakeholder in BISD, from uh, our athletic director to our board members, of course, our school, our school administration, the faculty and staff, the kids. I just feel and I know now that uh, that, that little tiny season where that happened made the setup for this special season that we just went through even more meaningful. And it's a great honor uh, because I know, you know, a lot of the strengths and also some of the, some of the weaknesses that we have, not only on our staff, but with our team. And so we're able to hit the ground running. You know, I get, I get hired and we didn't skip a beat. We didn't skip a beat as far as planning and, and the continuity that the kids deserved. Um, and so, uh, you know, there was a change in, in, in leadership from Kelly Lee to myself, uh, but for the sake of our kids, we, my biggest objective was continuity. And so, uh, you know, we, yeah. we were excited. We were able to do spring football. Let's go. So strength of our team coming in was we had a very experienced offensive line. Uh, I was able to keep the exact same uh, offensive scheme, uh, which is the flex bone triple option scheme. Um, it's not very popular in our area at all, which makes us have an advantage. Um, week in and week out, you know, most teams see a spread offense. They're, the challenge is on them to try to figure out how to stop this very, very different scheme in three days, right? In, in two and a half practices. Uh, I was able to bring Coach Mike Evans to be our offensive play caller. He leads our offense. We in the season, we had concerns. We were uh, figuring ourselves out offensively. You know, didn't, I mean, we were executing well, but the points weren't showing on the scoreboard. Well, Uh, preseason, to me, I feel like I feel like we were good, but I don't think everyone was on board at first. Uh, we were second guessing a couple of things. We're like we didn't know like what was right or what was like wrong or how we should do this or how we should do that. It was a new experience just switching from our past head coach, Coach Lee. Whenever there's change in leadership, there is an opportunity for skepticism. There's an opportunity for doubt to set in. But there's also an opportunity to retrain your brain and retrain the way you do things where you see you, you could get better. And so I chose to, uh, you know, be very honest with our team, uh, be very honest with our staff and with myself. And, and, and it, we had those conversations. This is a transition. Um, you know, things are going to be different. Um, and I have to do my job to make sure that I earn your trust. But at the same time, you have to do your job to make sure that when we call your number, your coach is able to trust you, your position coach is able to trust you, and me as head coach, we're able to know that you're gonna be the one that, that helps us go in the right direction. You know, just the mentality going to there, it was kind of iffy at first. You know. People were moving all over the place. They wanted us to do new things that we hadn't done in the past year, the past few years with uh, Coach Lee. We had to get the groove going and just get used to it pretty quick. It was a great learning opportunity. It was very genuine. Uh, some of the kids that, that replaced the kids that we lost to graduation from 2022, I think are as, it, as, as dynamic or, or, or more dynamic than the guys that they're replacing. You know, they're coming off of uh, two very memorable seasons already and they want their senior year to be special. We lost a lot of good players, but thankfully a lot of, uh, a lot of like, uh, juniors and, and sophomores stepped up and, and they really uh, showed up. Those were the guys that I had to target and, and really work with because I knew if, if, uh, if they were bought into my vision and how, we, how I wanted us to do things 
you know, the rest of the kids would follow. We able to let our players take a lot of control over, you know, keeping themselves in line. So that, that, I think that was the big thing. On good teams, coaches hold players accountable. On great teams, players hold players accountable. You know, we stepped up and uh, rose to the occasion and we charged and we led the program. I think we can look back and I can tell you uh, very, very genuinely that um, we did establish a great relationship with those, with those leaders. What, what I can tell what he brought was his loving and caring for everyone, not just the football team, but for everyone around him. I know people say that like coaches try to make you a better football player, but I think he just tries to make you a better man all around to because I mean, life is, football isn't for everybody, you know. So there's life after football, and he wants to, wants you to be a successful man after football. You know, we start off the season confident on offense, very confident on defense, and now it, the 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 task was go out. And, and use our very first game as a true measuring stick because we were facing San Benito, which I think at that time was ranked number two in the, in the, in the valley just behind uh, PSJ North. Uh, they had beat us the previous year and we were like, we got to get back at them. You know, they're 6-8, one of the best probably 6-8 programs in the state of Texas, if not in the valley, go three rounds deep every year. So we knew that they were going to be a testament to how good we were, how, what we needed to work on. I knew it was going to be a dogfight going into it. Um, I think most of that game we shot ourselves in the foot, like just fumbling, just not doing our jobs. And, you know, at that point, at that point in the beginning of the season, we weren't all there yeah. mentally. Turnovers for sure killed us. Uh, we weren't in the first half. We weren't executing the way we were supposed to. We were expected to lose, and halftime we weren't feeling good about it. But we outplayed them in the second half, so we had we had momentum coming out of that game. To come back in that second half and score 21 unanswered. Um, we knew that we could hang with any anybody, you know. And we were in that game to the, to the very last, so we we belong we we knew we belonged there, but uh, it just wasn't clicking clicking fully. But yeah. And lo and behold, we we don't win the game. You know, it's a close game, 28-21, but we see a lot of victories within that loss. Uh, we are see, we see where you know we were able to to move the ball well. Uh, we made some big stops. And this is against a very good quality opponent. I think that first game actually showed us a spark of what we could do when we came out of the first half, when we scored those two touchdowns. Losing to them, it kind of like clicked something in us. Like, all right, we know like what we're capable of. We just got to get there. And I think we've learned that like we have to play as a team to really do something special. And from there on forward, I think we've been doing that and kept kept going right after that. Last year we had the same, kind of the similar outcome uh, where we lost our first game and we came out and we went to the third round. So we didn't see any, any negativity out of that, just only a learning uh, experience. It's okay to lose one. And it's, you know, you, you regroup and you get back together, pick yourself up and say, okay, this is our plan for the next game. And so I, I really feel that you learn from those type of experiences, and boy did we learn. We didn't win the game, but we won a lot of uh, encouraging things throughout, uh, a lot of confidence. Boxes, boxes, I fit in the, boxes. the next two ball games are against some very good quality programs. You know, we face off against Port Isabel uh, and, and St. Joe, both of them led by phenomenal people. Uh, strong winning traditions, and so we were able to, to get both of those Ws, both games extremely physical, uh, but we, we, were, we were building our identity still at that point, right? Well, in the beginning, it was a little rough. Um, the scores and the games, like the outcome wasn't what we really wanted. Every game, we tried to have the same like mentality. We're on a business trip, go out there and win the day. It was just, um, on to the next, you know, like we, we won, we've been here, so let's just keep going and um, practice. Our coaches kept us accountable. The mentality, just go get it. We want to be better than we were last year. Um, we don't want to stay the same. We want to get better each and every week so we can have a great playoff run.
We do finish our non-conference schedule week four versus PSGA High. We go over there and, and to be honest with you, we, we face a very good team, a great scheme. I mean, in their own right, they make it to the third round this year. Uh, you know, they're district champs at the end of the year. And uh, so we don't, we don't win at PSGA. As, a, as an offense, we come out flat defensively. Uh, we blow some assignments. And, and we lose that game by 10 points. So I think after we lost that game at PSG High, everybody came together and really made the difference for everybody. It was a wake up call and after that game, we just started clicking and everything changed. But we just had to stick, take a step back um, and just realize what we're doing and in practice, we just fixed our mistakes and clear, cleaned it up and we just kept going. That, that was our last, our last non-conference game, so we finished our non-conference schedule with two wins and two losses. Two very tough losses versus some very good teams and two very tough wins versus some great teams as well. Next chapter, we start district. Right off the bat, we got to face this, this uh, almost larger than life uh, quarterback at Donna and they're scoring a whole bunch of points um, and uh, you know first year head coach how, how, how are you, how's your team going to react when the lights are the brightest and that is the start of district competition. I didn't really play that, play that much that game I had a hurt ankle but the first drive we were, we're still mad over the PSJ high game and we just come in and just drive it down the field drive it down the field drive it down the field and then let's go back on defense and just make like a bunch of stops is just it's just wild. We practically blew out Donna and that's where everybody was like, okay, we might be onto something here. I made some comments to the coaches and, and the players in the team that somewhere around week seven or eight we saw a physicality difference in their team. After that game we kinda of looked back and we, we did a lot of things very, very well and the confidence is just through the roof now. Of course there was some uh, obstacles that we had to get by. Uh, we won a very close game versus Westlake East. Uh, closer than it had to be, honestly. We were up 19-0 at halftime. Um, not that we got complacent or anything, but we were up, they came back and punched us right in the mouth and we didn't score the rest of the third quarter. They scored, I think, 21 unanswered. Go back and look at film and, and uh, we put ourselves in situations we shouldn't have. There was a minute left and Storm and the rest of the seniors put their team on the back and we went, I think, 60 yards down the field to win the game. And I think that showed us how bad we wanted it. We dug deep and it was all hard and that's where we got our momentum. Not taking anything against, you know, the West Liquid East kids or their staff, but, you know, we were the better team. Um, and then we, we faced off versus Harrington South. Uh, led by one of my, my closest friends in coaching, Coach Israel Gonzalez, and they're a championship caliber team. That's who we, we shared the district championship the year prior. And one of our objectives was to, to get a district championship, but not share it with anybody. And um, we have to go play them at, th at their place. Well, something really cool happened at that, at that game. So before the game, uh, our ROTC instructor here, Sergeant Major Lewis, uh, tremendous character, right? Uh, he asked if he could address the team and he goes in there pregame and he gives this just rousing speech, man. And he's got the kids all riled up and they're chanting red, white, and blue, red, white, and blue. I mean, they're fired up, man. And I said, I don't have, I don't have, I don't say anything here. Uh, let's go. So we go out to the field, the best pregame speech uh, you could have asked for. You know, with Sergeant Lewis giving us that, like, his amazing speeches and all that, we were all super locked in that game, and, you know, we held them to zero points, and I think that's where it really all came together, and we knew we could be something special. Basically every game uh, after that one, he was, especially you know, the most important ones, like the, the CC Vets game, the, all those, yeah, he, he was always there in the locker room. We finished our district season 6-0 and and capture our, our district championship. One of the biggest compliments you can get as a coach is when the opposing coach, and especially opposing coach that you respect so much, like I do him, Coach Gonzalez, uh, he was able to come over and, and he congratulated us. He said, man, you guys were ready. And, and I agree with him wholeheartedly. Uh, our kids were ready to claim that district championship. After that South game, we, we really thought like we had a really special team here. So the playoffs, we, we felt excited, felt good about making a little run in the playoffs. 
we're now uh, eight and two at the end of the season, at the end of our regular football season, eight and two undefeated district champions. We get to host a first round playoff game at Sam Stadium, at historic Sam Stadium versus the Mackay Bulldogs. We knew that, you know, we were gonna have to play a good game uh, because they're a big physical ball team. Uh, are, but we were playing at Sam's, baby. And so that was exciting. First and 10 for the Chargers, the 36 yard line. I knew it was, we were gonna beat McCann and I. They were, we had some word that they were talking uh, a lot of trash about us, saying that, oh, this is nothing. We're already gonna go play CC Vets. So we all had that mentality, like, all right, let's beat them. Let's show them what's up. Montoya dropping back, deep pass by Trillo. Trillo with a lot of traffic at the 50, to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, to the 10, and say goodbye, touchdown, Brownsville veterans. And we got that W, and which sets up a, a, a matchup versus a team that Brownsville Veterans Memorial had never beat in the playoffs, which was Corpus Christi Veterans Memorial. Coach Lee's team had lost them in the first round two years ago. Corpus Christi was a regional champion, so they were able to get to uh, represent the region four and go to the fifth round. Um, and they had a lot of those guys back. So we had to face them in the second round at their home place. It's a very physical ball game, but we win that ball game, you know, 17-10. And at the end of the game, that's when it, it got very real. I said, man, we just knocked off the defending regional champs and they didn't just let us come in here and beat them. You know, we came in here and we had to take that from them. Okay, so what do you do now, dude? You knock off the defending regional champs at their home, 17-10, but now you gotta play the big bad wolf, which is PSJ North, you know, undefeated, dominant on offense, dominant on defense. Uh, very few times ever do you, do you get to return all 22 of your starters from a previous year. So that was the case for the PSJ North Raiders. Uh, PSJ North did beat us in the third round last year, us meaning uh, Brownsville veterans, and it kind of set the stage. Um, it was kind of a disappointing loss because, I mean, we, not that we dislike them or anything, but they're the talk of the valley, and we were like, why not us? So the year's coming up, preseason and everything, we're in our mind, we know we're gonna play them again. Like everybody's saying, if we make it to the third round again, we're playing PSA North, like without a doubt. We don't wanna lose to them a second time. That was kind of our motivation throughout the season. All right, let's go beat North, let's go beat North. So the talk was about PSJ North and all their starters coming back, all 11 of their offensive starters, all 11 of their defensive starters, they were the dream team coming into this next year. So you're going in and you've got an undefeated PSJ North team that everybody's talking about that's going to win the state championship. Uh, and they didn't disappoint. They rolled through their district and they went 10-0 through their district uh, 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 schedule. And uh, so you, the, the clash was your Thanksgiving playoff game in the third round since they played here last year, we played at their, at their stadium this year. A lot of people were telling us basically, hey, congratulations, you've had a great year. You know, man, it, it's, it's a shame you have to go and, and, and play PSJ North and finish your year there, right? That's, that's the vibe that we were getting a lot. But our kids didn't buy that. Throughout the week of practice, we just knew we, we, had, to show, we had to show up from all the people saying that they were gonna stomp over us. You know, all the polls had like had us like all losing, but um, you know, we maybe a lot of people felt that we were underdogs, but we didn't feel that way. Uh, we felt like we belonged in, in in all the playoff games that we played. We felt like we belonged with them. Everybody was hungry. Like the practices were different, the mentality was different, the whole dynamic of the the game was different to us. You know, like, and everybody was trying to prove something to the whole valley, not just Brownsville, but to the whole valley that we could actually be something. And our mentality was just like, we're not just going to go there and see if we can hang with them. We're going to go there to win. Welcome, one and all, to none other than PSJ Football Stadium. This should be an amazing game. I'm Jacob Young, joined by Eric Alexander. And while we have PSJ North taking on none other than Brownsville Veterans Memorial here in PSJ. We had a great week of practice. Our kids really embraced the underdog role. We knew and we preached to our kids, we have zero pressure on us uh, to win this ball game uh, from outside sources. But 
our character, our work ethic demands that we look at this game as something that we can go in and, and, and win. And uh, we had identified some stuff on film that, you know, teams had never really exposed from that team simply because they, they would jump on them, you know. And they had this very aggressive, very uh, bully-like mentality versus everybody they played. But we were mentally prepared for that. Um, you know, in the locker room, like before, right before the game, you could you should have seen us. We just wanted, we were itching to just get out there on the field. Um, we were not, none of, like some of us were not even sitting down. We were just at the exit door, like wanting to go outside and warm up already. We just wanted to go out and show those guys what we're about. Jacob, we've seen a lot of great teams, but here are the two remaining in the Rio Grande Valley. It's about to be a, a big star-studded event here tonight as both these teams coming in for a grudge match here. And we were talking a little earlier, Jacob, this is starting to be, look like a rivalry. For Brownsville Veterans Memorial coming into this game, of course, they are the underdogs here uh, this afternoon. Just walking on the field was different because we know we have to beat these guys and we know they're a tough team. So I think everybody was on point that day. Just playing Smash Mouth football, um, just coming out first play and just going off the ball hard and letting them know that we're here. And once again, PSJ Stadium, he points to both sides. We are underway. It's going to be an onside kick and they recover. Just like that. It was. It looked to be 10 yards. Penalty marker is down. But this could be for PSJ North right off the get-go. I, I told our offensive coordinator, all those trick plays we've been practicing all year and we haven't used, hey man, green light, whatever you need to do, we're here to win this ball game. Well, they played so, so well on defense. Like they gave up 2.7 points a game, something crazy like that. They just had insane stats. So when you play against a team like that, you got to think about manufacturing scores. And our, our big thing there was every time we got close to the red zone or inside the 50, we we're going to take a shot at the end zone to see, just try and get scores so we'd have to keep driving the ball. Oh, and it looks like he'll go. Check that, it's going to be a fake. Throws it up the middle, has a man, it's in! Touchdown! Chargers lead! That's how we opened up the game with them, taking the shot right away. And we, then we caught three shots that game. That really made the difference in that one. I felt great starting from the first quarter, just seeing how we were able to dominate the way we were. Just everything was going our way. We were doing everything right. We were clicking, everybody was all together. Everybody, it felt like we were, like everybody's in unison. Like we just, I don't know, we played together as a team. Earlier on, it's a quick screen pass to the outside. Will be wrapped up, fumble! And Brownsville Vest picks it up! And the Chargers will take this for themselves! So it felt great because our defense was playing well and they have a good offense and it felt well because no one scores on them. And we, uh, I mean, I think we had th 21 points right at the start of the second quarter. So we, we, if we keep scoring, we felt we had a good shot. I think they blocked the punt and one of our guys picks it up in the third quarter and he starts running with it. He didn't get the first down, but at that point he got the flag. And if they would have blocked the punt and got a touchdown, the game could have probably went completely different. So that's why I think where I knew like the game is ours because I, I, don't, I don't go off like the beginning of the game, I go up by the end. So we're the most disciplined team, we're the most uh, phys physical team that day and we just executed on all, all three phases, special teams, offense, defense and we just hit them in the mouth and they couldn't answer. Will they be able to take advantage of it? Sends a man in motion, will be handoff up the middle, spins around, breaks free, down to the 50, getting it to the 45, yes, down at about the 39. Some people say you guys played a perfect game. Honestly, we didn't um, because we did give up two touchdowns late in the game uh, to close the score. So we gave two easy touchdowns at the end that you, you don't ever want to give up. But at the same time, at that point, we knew we had the game uh, you know, secured and I, I, I didn't want to risk injury with some of our starters. So we pulled those guys. I say that with a lot of pride and a lot, with a lot of respect to our opponent because in this profession, as a football coach, uh, you know that knocking off an undefeated team is is great. It, it's not something that you have an opportunity to do all the time, and then something that you're able to accomplish, and that's pretty special. Veterans just put it to them. They, they, they played a great football game and in their crowd. It was a sold out crowd there, and uh, that set, set the tone for like, you know, that this team belonged, and they were able to, uh, you know, to do what they couldn't do the year before in the third round, 
and it shocked the valley and it shocked the state of Texas. So they got some, uh, you know, some incredible uh, responses from from that upset win. A ton of passion to play, and well, just who ended up, I guess, wanting it more? Well, Brownsville Veterans Memorial. They had something to prove, and they proved it, Eric. It was, I guess, just so surprising, like all the fans and all the people, and and all the love we received, and and just how like everything everything went in that game. It was it went it all went in our favor, and it was all perfect. I think it definitely gave us confidence, knowing that even with a good opponent, we could dominate the way we did. Just knowing that as long as we have confidence and we play the, how we're supposed to play, that we could get the outcomes we want. And uh, from everybody being PSA North, I think everybody became Brownsville West Chargers. Look how far we can I made mistakes, but I'm far from dumb. Came a long way where we started from, where we started that. Cleaning up stains, things changed, thought it was a laundry mat. A couple times really thought about breaking the club. Honestly, I didn't even know who I was, how I'm loved, and what he's done. I'm rapping to a different drum. Lately, I've been reflecting on where I'm from, where I'm headed. Footprints in the sand, showing where I've been at. One book at a time, uh, ship that from the get go, and I'm being cold. Tell him catch on, it's another tempo. Dark world, but I still glow. Walk with the kingdom, seeing real growth.